I always said there's three ways to enlightenment. The first way to enlightenment, I call enlightenment through suffering. And enlightenment through suffering is, I am going to go through this experience. I can think of it from drinking, for example. And then I'm going to get through it, and then I'm going to look back on it. And as I look back on it, I'm going to realize after 10 years or so, the benefit that I had in that, and I am going to grow from having suffered. It's enlightenment through suffering, which is not anything I recommend. But it's mostly the way that most people take. So we go through these storms, and all of these difficulties, and all of the stuff that we have to go through, and then we get to a place where we look back on it, and we say, now I know why I had to go through that. You know? Now I know why I went through those addictions. Now I know why I went through those horrible relationship things, and I was always trying to be right, and, and not being able to work it out. Now I know why I had to go through the poverty. And now I know where the accident came about. Now I know why the fire that destroyed this. I know why the illness came about. But I don't do it by what I call enlightenment through suffering any longer. I go a different direction now. And the direction that I go is um, the next level of enlightenment. And the next level of enlightenment is while you are going through the storm, instead of saying, someday I will realize why I had to go through this, and I'll look back on it, and I will benefit from it. Instead of that, what I do is say, what's the lesson in this for me right now? What is it that I've attracted? Why have I attracted this into my life again? And I am going to get the lesson without having to go through a long period of suffering in order to understand it and explain it. So that's the second level. And that's one I would recommend to you as you start coming back to your place of origin, as you begin to reconnect to your source. I think that there is a way, there is a possibility of going through the things that we are told we're supposed to suffer from and not suffer at all. I think there's a way. I don't say that I'm there. And when you really get good at getting into the moment and being here now, as Ram Dass says, living from this moment and being just completely engulfed in it, whatever it is that your pain is, whatever you're thinking about, whatever, you know, there's a saying that says, I'm an old man and I've had many troubles, most of which have never happened. <laughs> and most of the troubles and the suffering and the things that they are really, they are really thoughts that all this suffering that you went through, you know, that it was all thoughts. It was just all thought. That we become what we think about, whether we want it or not. I mean, that's really the beauty of the work of uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks and Abraham, is the, the power of our thoughts. This whole idea of reconfiguring our way of processing things in such a way that we don't have to suffer. Because I'm going to go to a third point. I haven't even gotten to the third one yet. Everybody has a story. Everybody has something that, um, that takes place that they wish hadn't take place. We still have within us the capacity, as Abraham often says, you know, my not eating because there are children starving in Africa is not going to feed one child. My feeling guilty, like you can't get depressed enough to undepress another person. You can't get sad enough to make somebody else happy. But you can present yourself as a person who is aligned with Source in such a way that you are a God-realized soul, that when you are around a depressed person or a starving person, you give them hope. And that's what we need, is people who have a sense of hope and can elevate themselves because of the examples. The third way to enlightenment, and that is what I call enlightenment by getting out in front of it and stopping it before it gets to you. 
anticipating it. As you get to a, a level of awareness that is so aligned with God, where you're thinking from a spiritual way at all times, seeing the unfolding of God, practicing reverence for life, the things I'll be speaking about when I speak about this meaning phase. As you get and begin to start to elevate your consciousness, what happens as you begin to elevate this, your intuitive nature begins to take over and you begin to attract the right people and the right events and the right circumstances in your life. They just show up. And the right people, like when I decided to give up alcohol, when I decided to give up experimenting with certain drugs in my life, I remember still being tempted to go back to it. But as I was changing my conception of who I am, my concept of myself as a person, I would attempt to go back. I would find that the person that I was supposed to get the drugs from didn't show up. That, that it was like there was one more obstacle put between me and getting it something that I didn't want to have anymore. Because addiction is nothing more than you never get enough of what you don't want. You never get enough of what you despise. And, and instead of my just going and making it easier, there'd be one more step, and then there'd be another step, and then I'd have to pause. And before you know it, it would be over. The, the temptation would be gone. And the right people would begin to show up. That's an extreme example. So now you can see it coming. And you get out in front of these things that used to cause you suffering that you used to have to deal with in the present moment. And now, when they're on their way, you can deflect them. You can make them go away.